Hello everyone. Well, there are a lot more of you guys now, so first of all, welcome, and thank you all for your support, and thanks to a Cthulhu kin whom we all know and enjoy. But today I'm extra chipper because of a bittersweet justice that has been served. In October of 2016, two football players from Sacred Heart University in Connecticut were accused of rape by one Nikki Yovino. The two men are accused of forcibly taking her into a bathroom at an off-campus party and allegedly taking turns with her, which is horrendous and I would not wish that on my worst enemies. However, in February of 2017, Nikki was charged with falsely reporting an incident as well as fabricating evidence. Well, in June of this year, she entered a guilty plea with the prosecution, saying in a sworn statement that the sex was consensual and that she made it all up in order to, and you'll all love this one, not alienate a potential boyfriend. Specifically, she said that when the other male student heard the allegation, it would make him angry and sympathetic to her. That's right, everyone. Nikki Yovino made up the story of being raped by two football players in order to not make herself look bad in front of this guy friend. In fact, I'm going to quote from the credited affidavit on this one. It was the first thing that came to mind, and she didn't want to lose another male student as a friend and potential boyfriend. Well, now she's going to prison for one year. Now recently, one of the accused speaks out, Malik Saint Hilaire recounts the misery that he and one other faced for the two years in which his reputation was absolutely destroyed at the hands of this woman. Life has been altered and shaped in ways that nobody here could imagine. So I just hope that, you know, she knows what she's done and the fact that my life will never be the same. Like, I have anxiety, I have, like, PTSD from this. During that sentencing, as Malik was speaking, Nikki appeared to be rolling her eyes at the comments made by her victim. And yes, I'm going to call him a victim. Deal with it. She appears completely dismissive of what he's saying. And that is the attitude that makes other women think that they can get away with this. I'm going to get off the news part of this to really dig into this person here. For two years, these men were at the mercy of this woman. By Malik's own words in the Fox interview listed below... He never even got a chance to defend himself. These men were robbed of their education. The suspension that followed the accusation subsequently robbed the unnamed accused of a football scholarship and Malik himself of various scholarships he was awarded while in New York. Not to mention, any person who did not necessarily know either of these people involved, now what you get are whispers, people pointing at you from a distance. Hey, it's that guy. Did you hear about what he did? Wow, I can't believe it. I know people who have been falsely accused. This is something that robs a man of absolutely everything. This is not something that you play around with. This is not something that you can, on a whim, just make up. Especially in the Title IX world that universities are currently living in. The moment an accusation is levied, the man's life in the education system is forcibly forfeit. Title IX has no burden of proof. This abuse of the idea of listen and believe has robbed men across the United States. I'm sure there have been valid accusations that have benefited from Title IX, but this article was the one that caught my eye. So if anybody has an idea of a story or wants me to be fair in my reporting, leave an article in the comments below. But let's continue. Lawyer Frank Riccio? Riccio. Riccio, sure. Read a statement from the second victim who remains unidentified. The last almost two years have been definitely my most difficult of my life. The statement read. The roller coaster of emotions, fear, anger, sadness, embarrassment, depression, anxiety, and the list goes on. She accused me of what I believe to be a horrendous and horrific crime out of her own selfish concerns. I lost my scholarship, my dream of continuing to play football, 
and now I am in debt $30,000, and I'm simply trying to get ahead as best as I can. So not only were these men robbed of their chances of education, but now they must build up again. They must get a university to now accept them, but any football prospects are likely destroyed in the current education system, and the likelihood that one year is going to make this woman really regret her actions and really think about what she has done is unlikely when compared to the utter demolition to two goods men's potential. But that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you think about the situation. Thank you all for coming, and I will see you soon.